<laughs> now that is pretty darn fast. I was asked by Xtool if I wanted to review their Xtool D1 Pro. I said, sure, let's give it a shot. <laughs> well, here's the Xtool D1 Pro Golden Red. Now, I had no clue what this machine was going to look like. So, let's take a look together, shall we? So far, presentation is nice. We have the Xtool packets here on the top. And this is the start guide slash instructions. And here we have the instruction manuals and a thank you card. Hi, Xtool member. Well, hello, Xtool. Well, you actually get uh, customer support and a um, phone number, believe it or not. Magical things made with the Xtool. Creativity everywhere. Ah, this is to help inspire you to create some of your own fantastic projects. Now, I'm not all that creative, maybe I can learn something from all these people. The next we have the quick start guide. Quality of these booklets is pretty top notch here. Nice feel to them and everything. Very well laid out. It has all the parts that come with your Xtool D1 Pro. Yep, even uh, color coded uh, screws. Very well laid out here. You have um, pictures. <laughs> you got more pictures than words. Picture book. I'm all for that. And then you have your instructions. This is more detailed instructions about the machine. So it has different languages. Um, you can go ahead and thumb through it. You should read both, actually. And here we have a material packet. Sample materials. Now this is an actual aluminum sheet for to actually protect your work surface. Dial lasers really cannot do anything to aluminum, so it's good to have this as a protective covering for your work surface. And we have a variety of different sample materials that you can go ahead and test with. Pretty nice. Let's go ahead and put this off to the side and see what this looks like. You ready? <laughs> Now that is nice. Take a look at that. It's so beautiful. Now, they don't really call these extrusions. Xtool calls them plates, and this is the rear plate. And Xtool has a unique way of packing up everything. And in here, what we have? Yes, we have, as I mentioned before in my last video, this is the optical shaft. I have no idea why it's called that. Doesn't make sense. So far as we can see, there's lots of similarities to the regular D1. And what do we have here? We have another plate, and this one's called the middle plate. And you can see that the wiring harness is nicely tucked inside. And look at that. We actually have some optical end stops here. One on each end. That's nice to see. I know that some enthusiasts out there don't care for end stops on laser engravers, but yours truly, I like it. <laughs> More unique packaging. Check this out. What do we have in here? Ah, we have the risers, standoffs, whatever you want to call it. There are eight of them. So you have two sets. And I just the finish on these is just amazing. It's nice that they include the risers. And now we have another plate. This one is the front plate. This one houses the control board. It has Wi-Fi. You can see the antenna there. And you also have an SD card slot, so do not forget to put that in. Nice power button. Next tool, nice on there. Look at the finish on this. Absolutely. I just love it. And now we have the left plate. Just a little piece of foam here. The first one I saw these little notches sticking out, I thought it was cable management. But nope, it is for these optical sensors for the end stops. And you get the other stepper motor on the side here. Finishes. And like I said, I'm just in awe of the finish of this thing. Perfect color combination here. And then we have the right plate. And if you checked out my last review of this, uh, the D1, you realize that this has a pretty nice way of belt tensioning. All you do is put, insert that screw in there, 
It pulls it nice and tight and you lock it in place with that other screw. Can't get any simpler than that. And next we have the power supply and the USB cable. Both of these cables are rather long. That is nice to see. It's really tough to operate equipment with short stubby cables. And next we have the rail lube. I guess that's what you call it. And then we have the motor and limit switch cables. So be sure to always lube up when you need to. And what's in this box? Let's go ahead and take this out. Ah, we got ourselves some safety goggles. Glasses, goggles, always wear them. Always, always wear them. And then we got this little X-Tool toolbox. I think they could have done a better job with the label on the top, but it is what it is. You don't see that though. It's nice that it's a little toolbox. You got your SD card down in there, screws. Oh, you look at that. You get even a nice little screwdriver. That's in Allen keys or hex keys, whatever you want to call them now. I like to see more people, manufacturers do that. And here it is. Check this out. Huh, what a beauty. A 20 watt dial laser. This actually has four 5 watt lasers in there to combine the output of 20 watts. Look, it even has the air assist nozzle built right on. Pretty darn nice. Now look at that large cooling fan on the top. This cooling fan will only kick on when the machine's actually running or homing, so it's not always on, which is nice. Anything else in this box? Nope. All that in just this little box. Now I'm not going to go through an extensive build of this because I've already done one. The D1 is almost identical in the assembly process. I'll go ahead and throw a card in the upper right hand corner that you can click on if you want a little bit more detailed uh, assembly video. Basically there's three screws for each side. You don't have to worry about uh, you know lining up the corners. Everything just lines up. It's that precise. It's that easy to build. Having this toolbox is nice, but also what's really nice is having color-coded screws. Yes, the Loctite on these is color-coded. Basically, your longer screws are for your belt tensioners and your shorter screws are for your corners. Now, I still suggest that you follow the build instructions because, you know, could be wrong, but that's basically the general idea. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, line up these belts here. I'm gonna put this, uh, <laughs> What we call it, oh yeah, that's right, the optical shaft in. Do some wiring, zip tie it up, organize it, put our top part of our gantry on here, just four screws, and then you got one for the belt tensioner. And now I'm going to go ahead and organize the cabling a little bit more here. And last but not least, we're going to throw that laser module up on the top here. And then we're all done. Yes, time lapse, what a wonderful thing. Now, if you did pay attention to my last video of the D1, I created this spoil board and these 3D printed mounts. Now, the mounts that I have created do not take these rubber feet. So we're going to just go ahead and take them off. And once we take it off, we're going to just slide this into place. And what's great about it, it's a perfect fit. So the dimensions are identical. So just go ahead and slide it in. So. Again, this might be worthwhile for you to watch my previous video on the D1. I'll still include, uh, you know, the links below in the description for the file that I use for the spoil board for the grid lines, as well as the 3D printed mouse that I made. That way, if you have a 3D printer, you can print them yourself. Now, all you have to do is plug in the power, plug in the USB from the computer into the D1 Pro, and turn it on. But before we do anything else, disclaimer time. Yes, safety first. This video is for entertainment purposes only. You are following these instructions at your own risk. Always wear approved eye protection. People and animals not wearing protection should stay away. I am not responsible if you do not become a pro after watching this video. Also, be sure that you are in a well-ventilated area. <laughs> there could be a lot of smoke once you start engraving. And depending on the material, some of it could be very toxic. So please, safety first. Now, let's continue on with the video. I have to say, this is one sexy looking machine. 
Yeah, baby! Yeah. Now let's talk about how to focus this laser. Just like the other D1, you have the focusing arm that comes down, move your material underneath, and then on the left hand side you have your lever. This has been refined and makes it a lot easier to lock it in place. Once you lock it in place, then you go ahead and lift the lever back up. So far everything seems to be the same until now. What's unique about this laser is now you have a cut gauge. If you're not cutting anything, you leave it at zero. But if you're going to cut something, say that you're going to do like um, 10 millimeters, you bring it to the, the number five. Here's a little quick reference on the right hand side. Basically all this does is move the laser module itself, with, but not the guard. So we're going to not cut anything, we're just going to grave, so we're going to keep it at zero. Another thing Xtool did was they took care of the wire management. This loom used to just fall into place into the engraving area. Well, not anymore. It's nice and tidy now. And, of course, you still have to use the SD card when using Wi-Fi. Don't sit onto the SD card so you can print without attaching it to the computer. As I mentioned during the build, this is Air Assist ready as it comes with a little plug. So if you're not using Air Assist, you can go ahead and plug cap it off when not in use. And it has end stops on all directions. That's nice to have. I know I'm a fan of having end stops on a laser engraver. It just makes it easier. And I really thought that those uh, little things on the bottom there was for the cable management to tie down. But nope, that is for the optical end stops. So it will no longer crash when you home it or attempt to home it when it's not centered. I highly recommend that you download the Xtool Creative Space application. Uh, it's down in the link below. And um, as you see, I have an update for it. Not only does the software get updated regularly, but also this is how you would go ahead and update the firmware on your Xtool D1 Pro. Um, as you see, I have an update here. I've been testing it for about two weeks. This is the second update that I've been prompted to do. Um, and you know what? It's nice to see that it's happening. This is still in beta, so um, there's still some bugs to be worked out. Next, I'm going to show you how to um, get Lightburn running. Well, just like the D1, well, Xtool has created a config file for the D1 Pro. It's just that easy. We're going to go ahead and download it from their website. We're going to open up uh, Lightburn. We're going to choose Add Printer. We're going to choose Import. We're going to find the file that we uh, downloaded. Click on it. Click Open. And select Xtool D1 Pro. Hit OK. And then in the drop down below, we're going to choose our laser, which is now going to be the Xtool D1 Pro. That easy. Now it looks like I need to uh, get my uh, engraving off of mirror mode. Yes, the D1 Pro is rotary compatible. Right now I have the RA2 Pro on there. Unfortunately, it's not a dedicated uh, stepper driver like it was before. But just go ahead and unplug it and plug the RA2 in and you're good to go. For engraving this um, stainless steel mug, I decided to use Xtools Creative Space for it. Since the opening of my mug is on the left hand side, I need to make sure that my rotation is at negative 90. That way it goes along the mouth of it up and down. And I just set my size to 106 by 60. Given the fact that I'm just testing this, um, what we're going to do is do a laser cylinder. And what I'm going to do is also make sure that my dimensions diameter is in correctly. And then the power I'm setting to 100 and the speed of 15. Then we're going to click on start. Um, and here, either, either way, if you print, uh, click on framing or start, you'll get this notification that will come up that you have to still press the button to start. This is a safety thing, so that way you know that you're doing this action. And other th safety things this laser has is a motion detecting system. So if someone bumps into it, it'll kill the laser. And fire detection. So if it detects a flame longer than three seconds, it'll shut down the laser as well. And it'll set off an alarm. We'll get back to how this uh, bug came out. <laughs> It'd be very interesting to see. I may have cranked up the power too much. But in the meantime, let's try to cut something. Now I know it says 10 millimeter, but we're gonna go a little bit higher. How about 
18.5, almost 18.5 millimeters. This is just a standard pine. And uh, let's see what we can do on this. Now this is uh, max power. This is going to millimeters per second. Pretty slow, as you can see. And this will be two passes. This is real time here. And of course, like I said just previously, that this does have fire detection. So if it does detect a fire for three seconds or longer, it will go ahead and shut the laser off and an alarm will go off. But we're nowhere near that. You do see a glow here and it's uh, cruising right along. But man, it is, uh, it looked like it almost went through but that's why we're doing two passes. So let's go ahead and speed this up. And at this pass, you'll see that under the honeycomb bed, it is glowing. And that's one thing that's great. If you're gonna do a pass-through cut, get a honeycomb bed. It is more <laughs> than worthwhile. And I'm just engraving what my speeds are on there. And <laughs> look at that, fell right out. And definitely air assist would help with the charring, but Wow, slice through it, only two passes. I did try three millimeters per second with two passes, as you see on the right, and didn't do it, but it did it with two. Look at the chunk of wood. That's pretty darn impressive. Now I'm doing this in actually reverse order. I'm gonna now do it just with one pass. We'll see how far down it cut, and uh, see if, uh, <laughs> if I, two passes was a little bit excessive. Nope. It looked like it was going to do it, but definitely needed two passes. Still solidly on there. Now, let's go ahead and grab some other stuff, shall we? Well, here's all the engraving that I've done. <laughs> done some metal and some wood and some glass. Well, here's some dog tags. And Xtool says you could get some colors. Well, look at that. I got some colors. However, I was messing around with the heat and yeah, <laughs> look what it did to just these dog tags. Oops. You definitely want to uh, keep on testing. Um, somewhere at 60% power, somewhere at, you know, 100% power. Yeah. So I have some thicker stainless steel dog tags, and they did fare a lot better. For bear, of course. Yeah, you can see that uh, by just changing the speed and the power, you could definitely get some different colors. Almost like a fiber laser, but fiber lasers definitely do a lot better. I'm pretty impressed, though. You gotta remember though, stainless steel is an alloy, so you get different compounds. Um, don't tell the wife, but yep, yeah, we're missing a knife from the kitchen drawer. I guess this is an bearer's knife, so. But yeah, I was just trying different uh, stainless steels. Yep, see, stainless steel, China. It's our fine China. So you can ignore the pattern on the bottom, that's from a different laser, but this is actually titanium. Look at how vibrant that bear is right there. Of course, this is oxidation. Uh, it's a little bit engraved in there, but that is really impressive. It's my only sheet of titanium. I tested on fiber lasers and other lasers. So, And we all remember this, this piece of wood here. Two passes, 18 and a, almost 18 and a half uh, millimeters. That is super impressive. And of course, if you you know have air assist, that would come out a lot nicer. Now, I purposely did not wash off the tempera paint on this. I was doing a live stream and I was going pretty fast and it was doing pretty well for this cutting board. Then all of a sudden, look what happened. I had a shift. I'm like, how the heck did that happen? I've never seen a laser shift before. I know I didn't bump it. I mean, down here it looks really good. 
why did that shift up there? So I decided to grab a, another piece of glass. This is just from a, you no, know, just a picture frame. And look at this, look at all these shifting. Like what is going on here? So I was doing some more time lapses and I saw this pork up here. I'm like, whoa, and then boom, I saw the, the shift. It was going too fast, causing the material to bounce around on the, the, the surface. So I slowed it down and look what happened. So it came out perfect. And you just wash off this tempera paint with water, but I just kept it on there so you could visually see it a lot better. So this thing could haul, okay? It could go really fast, but you gotta remember that uh, laser diode on the top is a, got a lot of center mass and it, it will make the machine shake as well as the table. So here I did a bamboo cutting board. I think it came out rather nice and this was done rather quickly it's uh i believe it was 2200 speed at 60 percent power yeah very well done the other side's a little crispy we'll get to that some of these lines definitely are a little bit overdone but again this is why you take your material and you do samples <laughs> i told you the other side was crispy oh my goodness yes i've been testing this thing for about two weeks this laser is so powerful basically uh, if you have a five watt laser you can go four times as fast so yeah it's a uh, pretty intense i'm sorry that i didn't post any of the speeds or not that often on this one but this is a little bit steeper of a learning curve you need to test your materials using a sample spot and um X2 will be releasing their material suggestions shortly. And you can go ahead and try to follow their recommendations. And um, yeah, there's actually even, oh, what's that? Oh, I almost forgot about this. It just magically appeared. Yes, the cup. And look how it actually came out rather nice. Uh, do I dare turn it any more? Don't, don't, don't turn it. Don't, oh, yeah. Yeah, 100% power. Uh, 15 millimeters per second definitely too much this was at 30 much better <laughs> so i know what you're thinking what's john going to engrave next how about waffle yes you gotta try some food it's uh waffle time so what are we going to engrave on this well, i had a friend that visited from england about two weeks ago and he really liked something else so Let's engrave a little message to him. Just want to make sure I center this as much as possible. Now this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge for the laser. I mean, we got lots of uh, nooks and crannies on this thing. So let's see if we can engrave some uh, wording on it the best that we can. This is sped up five times. And um, as this is engraving, I really, want to thank you for watching this video. If you're looking to purchase this uh, laser, a link will be down in the description below. Thank you again for tuning in to Tripods Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in. Now, let's see what's on this waffle. Now I know it's not the easiest to read, but it says, I wanted pancakes. Because that's what he ate for breakfast every morning for a week. Pancakes. Now I know two puppies that would really love these waffles. Hands boy. Can you get a high five? There you go, bear. Come here, horse. Come here. Come here. Girl, come here. Take it nice. Here, was that good?